Who is ready for fangs, claws, and just all around excellent creature design? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best monster movies of the 21st century. For this list, we'll be looking at the very best films centered around monsters that have been released since the year 2000. Pulling from a wide range of genres, we're welcoming monsters of all shapes and sizes, from aliens to specific experiments gone wrong to supernatural creatures, with zombies being the only exclusion. It's not that we have anything against them, it's quite the opposite actually. Their popularity is such that they need their own list. Films with monstrous human villains will not be considered, no matter how inhumanly or monstrously they behave. Also, spoiler alert. Number 20. A Quiet Place This excellent and inventive horror movie established the already beloved John Krasinski as a horror filmmaker to watch. It's set in a post-apocalyptic world that has been overrun with deadly, sightless creatures that hunt using hypersensitive hearing. The Abbott family, who are at the center of the film, survive by leading a life of relative silence. A single loud noise could mean the difference between life and death. Fast and ferocious, the monsters are undeniably terrifying, but it's Krasinski's alternating use of sound and silence throughout the film that really makes A Quiet Place such a remarkable and effective creature feature. With solid character development and excellent performances all around, this is a horror movie with a ton of heart. We can't protect them. Who are we? Number 19. Trick or Treat a modern cult classic, Trick or Treat tells four different stories that play out in Warren Valley, Ohio on Halloween, all connected by the appearance of a mysterious trick-or-treater named Sam. He might be modest in stature compared to other creatures on our list today, but with his dirty orange footy pajamas and burlap sack mask, he's rightfully become a minor icon of the horror genre. As for the face, well, we won't spoil the big reveal. The film was directed by Michael Doherty, who would go on to make one of the most ambitious monster movies ever made, 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters. While the latter film divided fans and critics, Trick or Treat was met with near universal critical acclaim. For all we know, it's still down there. And so are those kids. Number 18, King Kong. We are accustomed to look upon the shackled form of a conquered monster. But there, there you can look at a thing monstrous and free. Director Peter Jackson clearly likes to challenge himself. After doing the seemingly impossible by adapting The Lord of the Rings, he chose to follow it up by remaking one of the most iconic movies in cinematic history, 1933's King Kong. At three hours, it does feel a bit long, but the movie is otherwise difficult to fault. It's an old-school epic that benefits from modern special effects that feel years ahead of their time. The cast as a whole is awesome, but Andy Serkis is astonishing. His motion capture performance imbues Kong with the sort of nuance rarely seen in big-screen monsters. Of course, if you can't get enough giant gorilla action, Kong Skull Island is a lot of fun. Men, place your charges! Time to show Kong that man is king. Number 17. Colossal When you think of monster movies, it's typically horror, epic adventures, and kaiju action that come to mind. In this unconventional sci-fi black comedy, however, filmmaker Nacho Vigalondo uses a giant, city-destroying creature to tell a surprisingly small and intimate story about addiction, toxic relationships, and personal responsibility. Ow, what was that? What was that? A helicopter crashed. Into my head? Oscar winner Anne Hathaway plays Gloria, an alcoholic, out-of-work writer. After moving to her hometown and getting a job at the bar of her childhood friend, played by Jason Sudeikis, she discovers that she can control a giant monster in Seoul, South Korea. It's not without its flaws, but Colossal stands tall regardless thanks to its powerful themes and Vigalondo's willingness to blend seemingly incompatible genres. Oh, come on. You're the one that killed a shitload of people, not me. Spare me the lectures. Number 16, Pacific Rim. To fight monsters, we created monsters of our own. The Jaeger program was born. While monster films are often fertile ground for exploring larger themes, sometimes you just want to see huge robots throw down against giant monsters. 
Pacific Rim centers around mankind's desperate fight for survival against interdimensional creatures rising up from a portal in the ocean floor. Their last line of defense are the Jaegers, towering weaponized robots. Yeah! King is ass! The film isn't nearly as thoughtful as filmmaker Guillermo del Toro's other monster movies, but it is undeniably epic boasting titanic big-screen battles on a scale that felt unprecedented at the time of release. Pacific Rim is just a really, really fun time. Make sure you're watching the right movie, though. A mockbuster called Atlantic Rim was released around the same time, and it is all kinds of terrible. Number 15. A Monster Calls I have come to get you, Connor O'Malley. Growing up is hard enough even under the best circumstances. Navigating the complex emotions of having a terminally ill parent, however, that can feel downright insurmountable. In this beautiful, dark fantasy film, adapted from a Patrick Ness book by the same name, 13-year-old Connor O'Malley struggles to cope with his mother's cancer. One night, a giant tree-like monster approaches his room and offers to tell him three stories, in exchange for Connor telling him a fourth in return. Let me tell you of the end of a wicked queen and how I made sure she was never seen again. The monster's tales ultimately overlap with Connor's real life and come together to make for an emotionally charmed and poignant coming-of-age story about anger and grief. Liam Neeson voices the unnamed monster, imbuing it with a charming gravitas like only he can. It is time for the third tale. Number 14. Troll Hunter <laughs> A found footage mockumentary, Troll Hunter packs a whole lot of fun into its modest runtime. Shot on a relatively modest budget of just about $3.5 million, which is nothing for a modern monster movie, this Norwegian film follows a group of students as they tag along with a, wait for it, troll hunter. They're all naturally skeptical of his job title, but they soon learn, like the audience, that trolls are all too real. Irreverent, delightfully over the top, and boasting strong performances from its cast, Troll Hunter sometimes feels similar to Taika Waititi's later What We Do in the Shadows. But given the film's unique troll centric mythology, unforgettable monsters, and dark humor, no comparison can really do it justice. <laughs> Number 13 The Shape of Water. When I tell you about her, the princess without voice. As touched on already, no one knows how to tell monster stories quite like Guillermo del Toro. Not only are his creatures instantly recognizable as a result of his unique visual style, but he also has a real knack for finding humanity in these strange and bizarre creatures. Many of his films, including Pan's Labyrinth and Hellboy 2 The Golden Army, should be considered mandatory viewing for anyone with an interest in creature features. Ultimately, however, we have to give this spot on our list to The Shape of Water. If you know something about what transpired here, it's your obligation to report any detail, no matter how small or trivial it may seem. It might not have the same variety of monsters as the aforementioned films, but in terms of storytelling and themes, it is without a doubt Del Toro's most effective movie to date, and the monster is at the very heart of the narrative. <laughs> Bye. Number 12. The Mist Stephen King is widely accepted as the modern master of horror fiction. As such, many of his works have been adapted to the big screen, with mixed results. The Mist, however, is without a doubt among the more successful King adaptations to date, even with the ending having been changed from that of King's novella. It came out of the smoke, locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power, even as the scorpions of the earth have power. <sighs> Set in the small town of Bridgeton, Maine, the film centers on a group of people who seek refuge in a supermarket. Outside, a mysterious mist covers the town, concealing all manner of terrifying, deadly monsters within. The creatures are indeed terrifying, especially since you can't see them coming through that mist, 
But the real terror is how quickly people turn on one another in times of crisis. And it is his fault. Yes, no, it is. Your no, fault. it is not my fault. Number 11, Monsters. So just patrolling because behind the fence is the infected zone. Before being entrusted with another major monster movie that we'll be talking about later, Gareth Edwards proved himself with this remarkable little film. Monsters was Edwards' directorial debut, but you'd never guess it from watching it. What is that? Whoa. It's tightly crafted and bears all the marks of a director with a clear vision. Even more surprising, however, is the fact that it was made on a budget of just $500,000. The movie follows a photojournalist as he escorts his boss's daughter through an area of land infected by extraterrestrial creatures. Embracing a less is more filmmaking philosophy, Edwards largely keeps the titular creatures off camera and in the distance. They define the world of the film while still leaving enough space to tell a character-driven story. Have you seen anybody else? Quack, 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 quack. Number 10, Attack the Block. Hey fam, she's ghosting. Allow it. Another directorial debut, this British sci-fi comedy horror is hard to put in a box. Attack the Block pulls from a number of genres, sure, but as you watch the film, what's most striking is that it feels out of place in 2011. It's got the sort of freewheeling spirit of adventure and a youthful ensemble cast that was far more common in the 80s and 90s, just with a modern aesthetic. Maybe there was a party at the zoo. And while director Joe Cornish clearly has a penchant for looking backwards for inspiration, much of this film feels totally fresh, from the characterization of our unlikely young heroes to the wholly original design of the extraterrestrials they encounter. An alien invasion story unlike any other, Attack the Block is a blast from start to finish. I brought them in the block. I've got to finish what I started. Number 9. The Cabin in the Woods Planning a monster movie marathon with a focus on fun? Then consider pairing Attack the Block with this riot of a film. Directed by Drew Goddard and produced by Joss Whedon, The Cabin in the Woods is a supernatural horror comedy. But it's so much more. Cleanse the world of their ignorance and sin. Bathe them in the crimson of... Am I on speakerphone? No, absolutely not. Speakerphone, no. No, I wouldn't do that. Yes, I am. In the off chance that you haven't seen it and have managed to avoid spoilers, we're not going into detail. All you need to know is that the plot is far more elaborate than the initial setup would have you believe. By the time the credits roll, you'll have a whole new appreciation for horror tropes. <laughs> You'll be drenched in figurative blood, and you will have met one of the wildest collections of monsters to ever grace the screen. Oh, shit. Number 8. The Descent Here's a crash course in how not to plan a trip with your friends. A year after losing her husband and daughter in a car accident, Sarah meets her friends to go spelunking in the Appalachian Mountains. Unfortunately, Juno, who organized the trip, thinks it would be a good idea to lead them into an unmapped cave system. Soon enough, they not only find themselves trapped, but fighting for their lives against the monstrous creatures who call the caves home. The descent makes for an extremely claustrophobic viewing experience that will keep you on the edge of your seat from the moment they enter the caves. After seeing the lethal crawlers in action, however, you may never want to set foot near a cave again. <laughs> Number 7. It. Pennywise? Yes, me Georgie. Georgie? Meet Pennywise. The Mist is a great film, but when it comes to monster movies adapted from the works of Stephen King, it doesn't get much better than this. With the first film in this two-part adaptation, director Andy Muschietti absolutely nailed it. The young cast delivers great performances all around, giving the film an emotional core, while Pennywise delivers one great scare after another. You'll float down here. We'll float down here. Yes, we do. <laughs> Bill Skarsgård deserves much of the credit for making it such a colossal success. His performance as Pennywise the Dancing Clown is both terrifying and terrifyingly good. He wholly inhabits the role, and in doing so, manages to instill audiences with a pervasive sense of dread that is hard to shake, even long after the credits have rolled. I swear, if it isn't dead, 
if it ever comes back, we'll come back too. Number six, the Baba Duke. If it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of the Baba Duke. It sounds like a load of nonsense, right? But for anyone who's seen the Baba Duke, this little rhyme is enough to send shivers down your spine. Each year, horror fans are given dozens of movie monsters and killers to fear. After audiences get over the initial jump scare, however, most are quickly forgotten. But every now and then, a monster comes along and instantly becomes an icon. The Babadook is one of them. In this tense psychological thriller, trauma, anxiety, grief, loss, depression, denial, and repressed anger all come together to give life to the titular creature. Do not let the outfit fool you. He's a monster through and through. <laughs> Number five, under the skin. When was the last time you touched someone? Hauntingly beautiful, desolate, deeply effective, and often challenging to watch, Under the Skin is a film that will, in fact, get under your skin. The plot can easily be summarized as follows. A mysterious extraterrestrial in the form of a human woman preys upon unsuspecting men. But that doesn't begin to scratch the surface of what's going on here. Countless critics, film theorists, and writers have attempted to unpack the movie's meaning, and have come up with countless different readings. The human condition, violence, race, gender, immigration, the nature of sexual desire, the film can be viewed through many lenses. There's no one interpretation. What we can say for certain is that Scarlett Johansson delivers a transformative performance as the central monster. Number four, It Follows. You're not gonna believe me. And I need you to remember what I'm saying. Okay? This thing, it's gonna follow you. If you're trying to scare your teenage kids away from sex, just show them this movie. It Follows is far more effective than a stack of pamphlets about STDs and unwanted pregnancies. Starring Micah Monroe, now considered a contemporary scream queen, It Follows was released to rave reviews, and is frequently labeled as one of the best horror films of the 2010s. Everything's okay. The story is about a killer supernatural force that is passed from one victim to the next via sexual intercourse. It's a well-crafted story built on a compelling premise, but what really sets it apart is filmmaker David Robert Mitchell's keen directorial eye. As for the unnamed monster, its slow, shambling pace and shape-shifting abilities will have you looking over your shoulder for weeks. Number three, Godzilla. We call him Godzilla. Make a great movie on a small budget, and a studio may just hand you the keys to a major franchise. After proving his mettle with monsters, the aforementioned Gareth Edwards launched Warner Brothers Monsterverse with 2014's Godzilla. And it's safe to say he was facing a lot of pressure to get it right. Some people were disappointed with the titular kaiju's modest screen time, but there's no complaints about the action when it does kick off. Atmospheric, beautifully shot and grounded by its human drama, this is a thoroughly self-serious monster movie. And despite the odds, Edwards makes it work. The film's success even inspired Toho to do their own Japanese reboot in the form of Shin Godzilla. Number two, Cloverfield. You gotta learn to say, forget the world and hang on to the people that you care about the most. Oh, oh, oh God, oh, God, oh, oh my God, what the hell was that? The Blair Witch Project popularized the found footage genre, but Cloverfield redefined it, proving just how far this distinct approach to filmmaking can be pushed. Oh, God, oh, on paper, Cloverfield is a fairly straightforward story about a monster attack, but in execution, it is so much more. It simultaneously harkens back to monster movies of old, while tying in post-9-11 anxieties and embracing then-modern technology to tell the story with astonishing tension. 
Matt Reeves, who would go on to helm two of the rebooted Planet of the Apes films, was widely praised for his direction. Mark Savlov, writing for the Austin Chronicle, went so far as to call it the most intense and original creature feature he'd seen in his adult life. Oh. 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 Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Alien Covenant, a worthy sequel with great xenomorph action and scares. Spring, a little known gem that might ruin dating for you. But that doesn't outweigh that you might be a mental patient and I gotta make sure you're the kind of crazy I can deal with. A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, a clever twist on the vampire genre that's destined to become a classic. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Host With the success of Parasite, South Korean filmmaker Bong Joon-ho cemented his place in movie history, but it was by no means his first major contribution to the medium. His third feature film, 2006's The Host, is a monster movie masterpiece. After an attack by a terrifying river creature, Pak Gang Du attempts to save his daughter while navigating the ensuing chaos and military action. The CGI can feel a bit dodgy at times, but that's easy to forgive considering everything the film does right. The Gwemu, thanks to its thoughtful creature design, makes a big impression. In keeping with the filmmaker's now trademark style, the host sees Bong expertly blending genres to deliver a monster movie that is equal parts humorous, horrifying, and heartfelt. The virus has definitely invaded his brain, just as we suspected. I agree. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.